All right, we're back and we're ready to do some branching. So it's yellow, same color that I used over there. And the way the branching works is um, it just takes the input values and loads them into here, um, effectively switching you to a different line of code. So in order to do that, what we need to do is uh, if we load it with a 1 and it's already a 1, that's fine. Or uh, if we're trying to load it with a 0 and it's a 1, obviously the 1 takes precedence over the 0 and it doesn't function properly. So what we need to do is first it needs to issue a reset signal and then it needs to load the values into the program gather. So we're going to build an AND gate right here. So, first thing it's going to do, so this is going to be your um, load input. When this is on, every clock cycle will load a value in this. Here on the other side, it doesn't matter which side is which. Uh, this is, excuse me, this is going to be your clock input. So this is going to come from your clock. And um, this is important. If this, if that end is the clock, then you have to do this on this end. Um, you put a block and a torch on it. It has to be on whichever end is the load bit, not whichever end is the clock. But we're going to go over here and see right here above uh, the last part of the line green, build two blocks out like this. Just right click on the wire and you'll put a block above it. Then go through and remove um, remove the block on the end so you have one block floating above this torch, two blocks above it. Then put wires on each of these and a torch on the end. You see when this torch is on it loads it with one. Then what we're going to do is uh, right click on here so it's diagonally up, go one out on this end and then drag this all the way out to the other end and one block out just like you did on that end then do this torch wire torch torch wire torch torch wire torch making effectively making NAND gates all the way down there now that you've got that uh, you'll want to go diagonally this way and out and drag this bus all the way down to this end uh, wherever this torch is, the second one from the end and uh, so see if you think of each one of these as an individual gate torch, wire, torch whichever uh, one is on the right so this one's on the well from this angle on the left so left there's a block, left side there's a block, which ends up being every two blocks. So skip two and then put that. And then put a repeater on each of these and then just run a wire down here. Then drag this out until it connects like so. Now um, I'm going to remove this so this turns on again so I can just measure the distance so the game can measure the distance for me. And then the same thing we do with the reset bus. Um, we're going to set these to 2 and leave the rest at 1 so they have equal delay. And then you can put that back. So that's your, uh, your load bit right there is done. Now for your inputs, you're going to go 1, 2 like that and then up for another two. So on the side of these ones, like that. And these are going to be your inputs from wherever um, for your branching. Uh, this is going to be, well, you'll see. Then put repeaters on the end, like so. And then two wires. I'm going to leave the end space open so I can put uh, redstone torches there and demonstrate it, but these will all be connected to 
whatever. Really, it doesn't matter. It does, but for right now, it doesn't matter. So let's uh, reset it back to zero. Everything's back to zero. Now we can build the clock, which is that purple thing over there. So I'm going to grab my purple wool. And I'll put an AND gate uh, here, I suppose. And this is going to be for your increment bit, which um, it, it's going to function the same way as the load bit, where one will be your clock input and one will be your increment input. And when the increment input is on, uh, excuse me, it will increment every clock cycle. And so this will be your increment bit, and this will be our uh, clock input. So I'm going to wire the two clock inputs together because they're coming from the same place. And if you look over here, that's exactly what I did there. The gates are just in different places. But what you'll want to do is we're going to run this through a pulse limiter now, which looks like this. I'm going to go block, put the torch on it, skip a space, put another block, some lag there, put a torch on the side, and run a wire around like that, and put a repeater in the middle, and set it to 4. And then this is going to be your input from your clock, um, which I'll now make. And I'm just going to, yeah, I'll just, I'll just do this. We have a 17 tick clock. There, now you're ready to uh, run it. So let's, uh, let's do our initial test run here. And uh, let's start the increment bit. Every clock cycle, it's going to increment. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on and so forth. And it resets to 0 once, it, once all the bits are 1. Now let's try loading it with a value. <sighs> Excuse me, I'm a bit tired. Anyways, um, you can change this as much as you want, and nothing happens because the load bit is not asserted. So let's say we have the value 110010 in our um, input here. So um, we'll stop incrementing for now. Uh, you can increment while you load a value too. I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Insert the load bit and you get the value 110010. Uh, which is also displayed on our output 110010. Um, I was just over there. It's easier to see things happening. Now, see it's still, the clock is still pulsing. <sighs> Excuse me. And um, you can increment while this is happening. And it just resets itself as it's incrementing. Because it increments, and then it resets, then it loads the value in. So, for all intents and purposes, this is perfect. Then, well, if the, say your load bit is on and your input changes, it's reflected in the next clock cycle. Now, uh, let's deassert this. And you can start incrementing from any point, obviously. So, um, each clock cycle is going to start incrementing from whatever value we had in the input because the load bit is no longer asserted. And uh, that's it pretty much. And it can run much, much faster than this on a 4 or 5 clock. Um, but realistically, you would never run it faster than this if you're running it in a computer or something. Um, I have a 4-bit microprocessor, which the sole design intent was to be fast. And it runs on about... 20, 25 ticks, somewhere in there, which, you know, this is only 17, so, 
realistically, you're never going to run it uh, faster than this. Anyways, that's all. Uh, like, subscribe, whatever.